this meeting, like in any other meeting, and I'm just going to draw something for you now, a critical... a critical diagram that we're going to make reference to as we go throughout this program. So what I'm going to say is some of the conversation that we're in it was in what we call the problem space. And some of it is in the resolution space. So within the one meeting, we had some people talking about the problem and some people talking about the resolution and that was all happening at the same time. And that's actually a very big problem in meetings. We have parallel conversations, some of it about the problem and understanding the problem and some of it about... Now, can you remember something that somebody said about in relation to the resolution? And, and now I know you're on mute, so I won't ask you to answer this, but can you remember, just give me a nod, the person who said, we need software for crying out loud. I've been trying to argue software for two years. Do you remember that? Give me a little nod if you do. The per Thank you very much for that. I appreciate it. The, the person who said that was already in the resolution space. They are already got actions in mind that will fix this sucker, that will fix this problem. While others in the same meeting at the same time are still thinking about the problem. Do you remember when one person said, I think we need to look at this data, I don't think I understand the problem enough? Do you remember that? Give me a little nod. Other people were here. So we have people in this space and in this space simultaneously, and that is a problem that makes the conversation so complex. So complex. When you leave this program, you will, you will be able to separate these two conversations to help your teams be in one and then the other rather than in them both at the same time. And if you that, do that alone, you will have vastly improved the, the capacity of your group to talk with one another, to resolve problems and to share. You see, one of the reasons people get so frustrated in meetings is because we're kind of running along parallel conversations, but we're not really talking or listening to each other. Some people are trying to figure out the nature of the problem. Others are saying, I know how to fix it, and they cannot meet. Now, it's not just that is the problem. In fact, there's even more to this. I'm going to just draw a little line across here, and right here and here. Because in any problem-solving um, conversation, there is first information or data, information, analysis, and decision. That's true of any decision-making process, whether it be in the problem, or the resolution space. Analysis, decision. Now, what, uh, what kind of information are we gathering in the problem space? What's the analysis? What's the decision? What it, is, what, what it is in the resolution space for the analysis and decision. I wonder what that is. Well, here is the answer to that. You see, in the problem space, the core decision we're making is, is what is the what is the core problem? That's where your group needs to go to answer that. We, we want to help them get to a shared answer, consensus, on what is the core problem we're trying to fix now. 
That's where you want them to go. And over here, where do you want, what's the questions you want them to be able to answer is, is what action should we take? That's the one we want answered down there. You as a manager want to help, we want to help your group come to some shared consensus on the answers to the question, what's the core problem we think we're dealing with and what's the action we should take? Now, the question is, what questions do you ask up here and what questions do you ask here to help your group then arrive there? And the question that we ask here is, what's the signs and symptoms? Now, there's other ways. What's, what's the signs and symptoms? And then what is the causes? What's the underlying causes of those signs and symptoms? And then what do we see as the group, what do we see as the root cause? Over here, what are some options for action? Let's list those. Analyze options for suitability. then, okay, let's agree to what actions we should finally take. And in actual fact, in any group conversation that makes the decision-making, we'll need to go through these simple phases. And the real problem with our meetings is this, that in actual fact, we, don't, we have people, some people in the problem space, some people in the resolution space, but not only that, we have some people in the divergent part of just listing information, some people are in our analyzing, and some people have already decided what the core problem is. Do you remember in the meeting we read out that one person said, I know what the core problem is, we've just got to fix our relationship with marketing. The core problem is we're not dealing with our key client very well. So whoever said that was down the bottom of this problem space. But then there were others. Let me look at the data. Tell me more about what it tells us that we even have a problem. <laughs> See, in other words, some people can be up here, and they'll, some people will be here, and some people come into your meeting and they're already here. But not only that, look at this. Some people come into your meeting and all that, they think all that's clear and they want to start saying, oh, we could do this or this or this. And some people come in and go, no, the first thing they're saying is X won't work, this will work, that won't work. And other people are coming into your meeting and saying, I know what action to take. Buy the software, for God's sake, please. Don't make me a whinger out of me. I know what action should be taken. So you've got people coming into your meetings and just simply because of their background experience and their temperaments and their various biases and preferences, some people come into the meetings and they want to get underneath what the problem is. And this is really what stimulates them. And other people just want to come in and go for it. So you don't just have some people in the problem space, some people in the res resolution space. It's even more problematic than that. You have some people coming in who want to just share more data about what the pro how we even know there is a problem. Other people who love to get analysis and other people who've, who've gone to the core of it already. And all of these people are speaking at the same time, while all of these people are speaking at the same time. No one is doing anything wrong. None of them are doing anything wrong because they're doing what they do best. Some people have got a real knack to just cut through and tell you what action should be required down here. 
And some people are just the creative types that just want to generate options. They love it. We could do this. We could do that. Why don't we try this? Why don't we try that? And nobody's doing anything wrong. It's just like you have a group of people who are all very good at their instrument and they've walked into the orchestra pit and they're just starting to play their instrument and there is no conductor. Bill needs to be that conductor and you can be that conductor. You can guide people. If you simply guide people to move gently from one phase to the next, then you can, help, you can feature each instrument and some people will be very strong and certain as you move through. That's fine. As long as they're not all playing at once, which is just too complex for most groups to figure out. That's why meetings are frustrating. It's because everyone's saying that what they come in with what their general preference is. And when Bill says, we have a problem with feedback from our departments, I don't know what to do about it. Everyone hears that question differently. Some people hear that as, tell me, tell me what we should do. Other people are hearing that who have a different kind of mindset. What is the core problem? And other people are hearing that going, give me, I'll give you options for action. Do you see it all just depends on their temperament, on their mindset, and none of them are doing anything wrong. But it makes for, it makes for a really unproductive, disengaging, lousy, lousy, frustrating meeting. The problem is never the people. The problem is they're not being facilitated. The problem is Bill is not providing them a structure, a simple, very simple structure to step through so that they can arrive together at what they consider to be the core problem. Then list some options before any analysis happens. List first, then see whether which options might be more suitable and then agree to what action should take. It's this simple. But as a manager, you will need to design your and structure your meetings so that you know, okay, the, put this, the objective of our session is to arrive at this particular meeting. I'm making something up now. I'm role playing. The objective, this is what Bill might have thought. The objective of our session today is to come up with some actions to respond to the feedback we've been given. To help us do that, to help us do that, we are first going to just check in on what the data is. We're going to share your observations of the data from the survey. Then we're going to ask what may have been causing that particular, those numbers and that information. And then we're, I'm going to ask you, what do you think are the top or the cop? And it may be more than one, right? It may be a couple of core problems. But what is the core problems or problem or problems that need, we need to face? I'm going to ask you these three questions. And then when we're clear on that, I'm going to ask you, what are the, we're going to list some options. We're going to look at which ones are suitable. And then we're going to decide on action. And then I'm still role playing now. I'm playing Bill. Is everyone ready to start? Great. First of all, let's quickly look at the data. Has everyone seen the survey? Good. If you have, I want you just to share what are some of the first things you noticed in the survey? What's some data that caught your attention? He will list that up. Now that I've listed those, what do you think of the core problems in that? What, what do you think of the main issues underneath this data? Oh, there's two or three things here. So what do you think of the core problems? And now that we've listed that, bang! Great, everybody. Let's move to resolution space. Let's have a, what are some options to deal with this? First, list those. Thanks, Bill, list them. Which ones of these do you think could be more? Is there a low-hanging fruit here? Actions we could do sooner rather than later? Things that would be easier to do? Okay, yep, blah, 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 blah. Let's do that. Great. Finally, who will do what? That whole meeting could be done in 15 minutes. It doesn't have to be a day's workshop. It can be 15 to 30 minutes. It doesn't, and some issues don't need any work in the problem space if it's already obvious what the problem is. But if it's obvious to you as a manager, you better tell your team what signs and symptoms you see, how you consider that to be, what's causing them, and how, how you got to what the core problem is. You better tell your team how you've arrived there before you bring them over here. All right. 
So this is one of the issues. And, and do you know what? Just before I'm going to ask us to go into small groups, there's another problem that happens in meetings. And that is, have you ever been in meetings that just come and then they stop here? Oops, stop. Have you ever been in meetings where information is shared and nothing happens after that? It's called an update meeting. Everyone just shares. Either they share something about their, what are they doing or they just share, they gather information, they just update, they just tell. And then, bang, thanks very much, we're all going to go home. That's a meeting that comes down, information is shared of one kind or another, then bam, it stops. That is an unhelpful meeting. If all you're going to do is update, and updating does have its place, it needs to be curtailed and shortened, and I'll explain how and why later on. But that is a major dysfunction in a meeting, and it works okay to start with if it's a new team. But I want to let you know, if you're in groups and you're coming together and all you're doing is updating, you're stopping at this line, um, it's serving you as a manager because you get to know everyone else, what everyone's doing, and, but most people are bored silly. Remember we want to make meetings that are interesting? Do you remember that? Remember we shared most, many meetings are boring? One of the reasons they're boring is because they don't go any further than update. So you ne your group never rolls up their sleeves and decides what's a problem we're facing. They never get to discuss it. They just update. That's it. Or how about this? Sometimes, have you noticed that sometimes people share and share something at the top? Maybe here, here you go. I'll put it on this side. There's options for action, people to share it. And then there's analysis. And then you go up and do more options from actions. And then people talk about, oh, no, that would be really good. Then they share more options. Oh, and around and around and around we go. And we never drop down to, oh, for crying out loud, who's, what, which one are we going to do? Have you ever seen that as a problem? That's circling here. This is stopping here. This problem is when everyone's going off at once. Everyone's going off at once. That's a problem, a very frustrating problem. This problem is the issue of frustration. That problem is boredom. This is also frustrating for groups that never get down to the bottom. And here's my favorite. Here's my favorite. Here's the problem of someone saying, I think we have an issue with something, and then someone else saying, I know what we should do. And it's really problematic if it's the boss who's doing it. And this goes straight to, from symptom to solution. So this is a bit like what Mary was doing in the meeting. Oh, we've had feedback that our, we've had feedback that our, some of our departments don't like what we want. I know what we should do. Bam, straight there. Now that bypasses all these steps. And if it's the manager who is doing that, it's even far more problematic because you can't challenge the manager so easily. But this is a very, very important pr issue. You see, if the managers, oh, we've got, we, we've got bad feedback, bam, this is what we should do. And everyone says, oh, okay, I guess you're the boss. You know what I mean? I guess, whatever. But guess what? Just to widen out, uh, uh, to, guess what? These steps build commitment. These steps build in, involvement. And the boss in her or his rush to get to a solution has completely cut out the mind and the intelligence and the genius of their team because they already know better. Because I've been here before, I've been doing this job for a decade. Believe me, I can save everyone the time. Bam, this is it. You know what I mean? It doesn't matter if they're right. They're already wrong because there's no commitment. Hey, what about this? Have you ever seen this? I'm gonna write it up here. Um, um, sorry, ED, ED 
equals CD times RD. An effective decision is commitment to the decision times the right decision. So the boss may be going, bam, it's the right decision. You know, they might get an eight out of 10 for that, but their commitment to this decision and the team is a three out of 10. Those two multiplied together gives you an effective decision and guess what? They have an ineffective decision. The boss might be right, but that's insufficient. If you want your team involved, then it's, and if you want a really effective decision, be prepared to give up a little bit of your RD. Go for a seven out of 10 and get commitment eight out of 10. And guess what? 56 tenths. It's a much bigger number than a nine out of 10 here and a two out of 10 there, which is 18 tenths. We want to be able to get bigger numbers on the CD and even be able to trade off a little on the RD if you need to, because that's what an effective decision is. Here is how to do it. Here is how to do it. All right.